Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. I thought I would take a few minutes and open up the vlog for the week. My theme for the week is going to be focusing on Valentine's Day words in the title. So there's some type of word that you could associate with Valentine's Day in the title of the books that I have picked to read this week. I have four books on my list for the week and as you know if I have extra time, which <laughs> if you see this first one, I'm not sure I'm going to have extra time, but if I do I will slot some other books in that I have on hold from the library and that have come in. If things sound really good to me and I don't have an upcoming TBR that's scheduled yet that I know I can slot it in. I just put it in wherever and I'm planning on doing the final week of the month kind of as an open TBR catching up on any books that are help you know have been held over from previous weeks or anything that is in my collection from the library that I haven't finished and I want to make sure I read before I return. Other little bit of housekeeping here. I wanted to do something different this week. I wanted it to give you my prediction on what I think I'm going to rate this book at the end of the week just based on my thoughts on the synopsis. I haven't actually read any reviews from these books <laughs> because I was looking for specific titles that had words associated with Valentine's Day in them. That's totally how I picked the books, not based on reviews, other recommendations, anything like that. So I don't know what I'm going into in terms of rating <laughs> on Goodreads or Amazon, any of those. So I have read the synopsis of these books, but that's about it. So I will give you my guess as to what I will rate these at the end of reading each one of these, and we'll see how accurate I am when I, once I'm finished. The first book is a doozy. It is from my 2023 TBR. It is one that was being held over from last year when I was on my historical fiction kick. I had to take a break and so I have put it back on for this year. The first one that I'm going to read this week is The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. It is 600 and some super thin like oli olive skin, no onion skin. I'm trying to say onion skin or like Bible pages where you can see through them. It's deceiving. I didn't think it was that big. <laughs> thick of a book and then when I looked at it kind of you know just went like this and went what do you mean there's 600 and some pages in here yikes but I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this one this week this covers the stories of three code breakers in World War II at Bletchley Park I believe that's how you say that that must help break some codes to aid in the war effort talks about their lives things that they were going through as they come out of their shells find their own in a time when women weren't really given jobs they weren't really working they were married off and came wives and mothers. And so talking about these three women coming into their own, you have, it looks to be dual timeline. So it must flip back and forth. So I'm really excited to read this. Now I will say the other two books that I read last year from Kate Quinn were The Alice Network and The Huntress. Both of those I gave a five star. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm safe to assume <laughs> that I will be giving this a five star as well. I'm pretty sure if this one is even four and a half, five star, obviously, which is very close. She's going to be an auto buy author for me. I know there's another book that she wrote, I believe late last year, was it? And that is being added to an upcoming TBR of mine because I do really adore her books. They're tough because they cover really heavy topics about the war and really bring to life things that we only have heard about in textbooks. And so they're tough. They're emotional for me. And so I have to kind of spread them out and not read too many all at once. Otherwise, it, it just becomes... <laughs> It's like I said, it's a little heavy for me and I need to have a little bit lighter topics interspersed here and there, but I'm looking forward to tackling this one first this week. Love her writing. Can't wait. The next book I grabbed during a recent Barnes and Noble visit, because I knew I was doing this upcoming TBR, it looked cute. <laughs> it looked fun and I thought it would fit the theme really nicely. So this is Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne here. This book is covering Meg, who has wonderful and does lettering for a very fancy 
upscale boutique, I believe in New York City. Yes, for planners. And she does, she used to do, I should say, wedding invitations, that type of thing. And she stopped doing the wedding invitation lettering with a particular case where she embedded a message into one of the documents that she was doing. I don't know if it was the invitation or what it was. And all of a sudden, the groom shows up at her shop and confronts her with this document. She didn't think anybody else would be able, she didn't think anybody, not anybody else, anybody would be able to decode the message that was in there. I'm kind of, I'm very interested. You know, I didn't really know that that kind of job existed where you're doing fancy lettering. I mean, I knew calligraphy and all of that type of thing, but that people write in other people's planners with very fancy handwriting. I guess I just it didn't really realize that people paid somebody to write in their planners. I don't know. I guess I just never thought of it. So this is interesting to me. Completely different job than I would have ever thought about. And the premise is cute. It looks fun. I thought this would be perfect for a Valentine's Day vlog. So I'm not really sure what to, <laughs> I'm gonna give a guess and I'm gonna say for this, they all are guesses. I mean, let's be real here. I'm gonna say four. I like the premise, it's interesting. It's totally different than anything I've read so far. Her occupation really intrigues me. So I'm gonna say four and we'll see how we feel. The next book that I picked was Bleeding Heart Yard by Ellie Griffiths. I have read another book by this author, but when I saw that there was another book out that I believe is a standalone, so I'm super excited about this one. This is the case of Cassie Fitzgerald and her friends who they tell you right in the synopsis of the book killed one of their classmates in the, in the 1990s. I'm like, they did what now? They killed who? And so Cassie is invited back to a reunion of sorts and another classmate ends up dead. So <laughs> this really caught my eye. Normally you don't see that in the synopsis. Oh yeah, they just, they killed somebody and oh, they're all back together again. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm really excited to dive into this one and report back. I'm going to give this Gosh, I want to give this a five star. I don't know. I'm going to give it a three star. We'll see. I'm hoping I'm surprised and it ends up being a five. Just based on um, the other book that I read from this author and what I'm remembering about it, her writing style, I don't know is exactly my cup of tea, so to speak, but we'll see. I'm excited. I hope this is a five. And the last book that I picked up for this week, I want to focus on starting some new cozy series. New to me anyway, new to me cozy series. I don't want to just read series that I've read in the past that admittedly a lot are dated and were written in the 1990s and the early 2000s. And so I don't necessarily want to just focus on those series. I want to focus on some new ones as well. And so this one I picked up, it's a long running series. I've heard good things about it. This is the first book and I had it at my library. It's Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander. So I figured baker or bakery would fit into the Valentine's Day theme. So because a lot of people get baked goods for their sweeties on Valentine's Day, thought this would be good and a really great excuse to try a new cozy series that has been long running. I'm looking forward to this one. It follows a typical cozy trope, at least in this beginning, in this first installment. We have our main character who just recently graduated from culinary school and returns home while trying to heal from a broken heart. That is very common that you see in cozy mysteries. So I'm excited about the culinary school aspect of this. Obviously it says bakery. Hope that there's some recipes in here. Always enjoy when there's recipes in a book that's dealing with a bakery or you know anything culinary arts. I'm excited for this one. Thought it would be a fun read and a new start to a new series. I'm going to rate this one. I'm going to go with a four. Okay, so my plan is to dive into the Rose Code, try to knock out some of these pages, just dive headfirst into this book. I will check in with you as I continue to read the book. Checking back in with you on the status of the book. Oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever yelled out loud while reading a book. Thank goodness I was at home. <laughs> 
I was reading this and got to page 590 in this edition. There are a lot of surprises in this book. I will say there are a lot of reveals, things that come out as the story unfolds. But on page 590, I yelled out loud when something was revealed that I was not expecting, didn't see it coming, was happy. It was a happy surprise. Family probably thought it was crazy. <laughs> But along with these books, you have the heartbreak and the sorrow and the pulse pounding elements that just keep you riveted to the book. And you also have these moments of absolute beauty and your heart swells and it's like, love is in the air. It's the perfect Valentine's Day book for those elements because it really does show the power of humanity and the power of friendships and love over years. This was, this is amazing. I am almost done. I will check back in with you, but I had to give you an update because like I said, there are things that unfold as this book goes along that surprised me. That one got me to yell out loud, which I, I don't think I've ever done. So two thumbs up, <laughs> Kate Quinn for always surprising me. Okay, I have finished The Rose Code. This was incredible. I don't know what other words to use that I haven't used already. It was heartwarming and sad and beautiful, sad. <laughs> all of those things. I loved it. I am going to go with the five star that I thought I was going to give. I love this author's books. She does a fabulous job at telling historical tales in such a way that she weaves and weaves into her stories fiction and nonfiction elements. I read the afterword as well and found out that Oslo as an actual person or was an actual person that had dated Prince Philip back in the day. So that was very, very interesting. There was mention of Alan Turing in here, which I found amazing as well. So she does put in people that were from the time that you would anticipate would interact with these characters or, or their lives would interweave in some way, which makes it even more realistic and real. The stories come to life. They're so vibrant and vivid. Like I said, it's a hard book. All of her books are difficult because of all of the sorrow that you know that people went through during the World Wars and and all of the atrocities that happen to people but it, they're also really heartwarming when they talk about all of the stories of the actual people and how they came together the friendships that were formed and it was a great book highly recommend picking this one up if I could turn it around the right way highly recommend picking this one up as well I am going to go ahead and start Bleeding Heart Yard which is by Ellie Griffiths actually I was wrong I didn't realize it was part of a series it's the third book in a series thought it was a standalone so I was wrong about that but I don't think it's a book that needs to be read as a part of the series in order to understand it I'm looking forward to reading about these characters and how how they admit from the very beginning that they killed somebody back in their, I think it's high school, their high school years, and how that all kind of comes full circle at their reunion 21 years later. So I'm excited. I'll check back in with you as I dive into this book. from the chocolate store. What you just saw was some footage of my husband and I going to the Saunders. Some people say Sanders, you could say it either way. Saunders location near us. We are lucky enough to have one of, I think, the best. 
<laughs> the best chocolate factories near us, very close to us. They combined with another chocolate factory that was a very popular Morley candy. And so they've combined their efforts. I will say, I mean, I know the, the store shelves looked relatively full from the footage that we just took, but I will say in comparison to years past, it was quite a bit smaller. I'm going to go back for Easter because I remember we went, I believe we went Easter last year and it was absolutely stuffed to the gills. So I'm hoping <laughs> that maybe, because Easter is very popular for Easter baskets for kids and things like that. So perhaps they ramp up the production a bit for a lot of different types of candy for Easter baskets. So I'll be interested to see what, <laughs> what the selection is like when we go back prior to Easter. But my husband got a couple of things for me and I wanted to show you what we picked up. We got this gorgeous chocolate heart here. I did open it so I wouldn't be fumbling with it on camera, but I haven't eaten anything out of here. Just has this little thing and I will show you there's no, <laughs> I don't know, what would you call it? Like pictures of what each candy is, some type of like, almost like a map or legend. So I'm going into these blind, but look at how good these look. I know what some of them are just because I've had their candy for years, but yes, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess sometimes you just have to bite into the chocolate. Like, you know, what does Forrest Gump say? Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get kind of a thing. If I'm butchering that, that's the gist of it. At least that's how I remember it. And then I did pick out these because I love both of these flavors. So we got the peanut butter milk chocolate heart and the dark chocolate raspberry. I prefer milk chocolate, but I love raspberry and chocolate together. So I thought these would be fun to try as well. Just wanted to give you a little context of all the yumminess that you were seeing. We of course had to stop at our favorite chocolate factory right before Valentine's Day and I wanted to take a moment and share that with you as well. Well, I've finished Bleeding Heart Yard by Ellie Griffiths. This was a chore, not necessarily <laughs> I mean, winter chore is good. This was not a good chore <laughs> to get through this. Unfortunately, it was not at all what I was thinking. We have a group of friends back in the late 1990s who are finishing up what I believe is the equivalent in Great Britain to our high school in America. They are taking their final exams and one of their fellow students is murdered. They admit right from the very beginning that he was murdered by their group. And so that's never a mystery, a part of this. What ends up being the mystery is that when they attend this reunion 21 years later, another one of the students is murdered. And so they have to look amongst themselves, figure out why, and go back and rehash, rehash, talk about it again, rehash what happened 21 years prior to their classmate, <laughs> the entire book, the whole book felt like we were just going over the same scenario or the same event over and over and over again based on everybody's different recollection of it. So they'd have a recollection, they'd talk in a group of two or three, then they would think about it themselves. So you'd have this inner monologue from the, the character. By the way, this is told from multiple point of views or POVs. And so it switches constantly. It does tell you at the beginning, uh, beginning of the chapter who the point of view is being told from. So that is helpful, but you're hearing the same story basically reiterated feels like hundreds of times honestly in this book told from multiple perspectives then they tell the police officers then the police officers talk about it amongst themselves then they question somebody else and then we have inner monologue from a different character from their point of view it was a lot this felt like it should have been a short story or should have really been changed up in terms of the point of view i thought it just made it tedious if it had just been told from the point of view of Harbinger, who is the main detective on this case, that would have saved a lot of that tediousness and just going over the same events over and over and having the characters try to remember. It was too much. I really didn't feel like it added to the story. The ending was different than what I was expecting, but not in a good way. I feel like the ending was just put there to throw people off because nobody, I don't know, maybe people saw that coming, but it just didn't fit. It was odd, not necessarily necessary. And I thought that there could have been something else that was shocking fit with all of the characters. It was definitely a twist and not 
not something that I think was well, it wasn't a welcome twist to the plot or the story at all. All of that to say, this book was not a hit with me. So much so that I'm not even sure that I'm going to want to pick up the second book in the series that I was reading, the Ruth Galloway series from the same author. I'm going to give it a one and a half star only because I did finish it. The next book I'm going to read is Meet Your Baker and it's over across the room. <laughs> I've already started a little bit. I needed a palette cleanser. It's a cozy. I think it's Ellie Alexander. I'm gonna go ahead and start that one. I'm hopeful that'll be a good fun new cozy mystery for me. So I will check back in with my thoughts. I have finished Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander. This is a new cozy series for me that I haven't tried, but I am so glad that I did. I think there are quite a few books in this series. I don't know why I'm thinking 10. I could be totally wrong, but I know there are quite a few books in this series and I haven't tried any of them yet. I was so happy to be able to find this at my local library, pick it up and review it this week as part of my Valentine's Extraordinaire. <laughs> or extravaganza, whatever we want to call it. This first book in the series introduces us to Juliet. <laughs> Is it Capshaw? Yes, Capshaw. Yes, even she rolls her eyes at the name. She goes by the name of Jules. That's her nickname. But the town in Oregon where she's from and her family, her parents were obsessed with Shakespeare. So yes, she's named Juliet. <laughs> and her mother even says at one point to her in the book that she always felt like it was a lot for her to live up to in terms of love. It was a little interesting comment there, but we find our main character, Jules, has returned home to help her mother run the family business, which is Tort. It is a bakery in town. It is the summer season, so there are a lot of tourists there for the local Shakespearean festival that's happening. Jules has gone to culinary school and has worked on several cruise ships in the, you know, around the world. I know she mentions the Mediterranean, but she has traveled the world via cruise ship, being a pastry chef she met her husband there and she's having some struggles she's trying to decide whether or not she wants to continue in her marriage after he broke her heart it takes a very long time for the book to get to how he hurt her but they do eventually <laughs> spit it out I was like what happened <laughs> you know it's like this this suspense leading up to what the heck did he do because it doesn't say it right from the very beginning but she comes home to try to figure out what she's going to do with the rest of her life is she going to give him another chance or is she going to open up her own restaurant is she going to stay in business with her mother what is she going to do and so all of those things are swirling around in her head as she jumps in to help her mother through the busy bakery and touristy season she starts to realize that things aren't what they seem at least from her vantage point being away for so long and so far away she doesn't realize that the business seems to be struggling a bit her mother is on her own after the death of her father many years ago and Jules can see that her mother is slowing down a bit in terms of age and being able to keep up with all of the baking for their business. She has hired a couple of young <laughs> young people in the business that Jules Jules is wondering like, why? <laughs> why have you brought them on? So Jules has a lot of questions about what is exactly going on. And then we have a murder. Of course it happens in the bakery after hours. And of course Jules is the one to stumble on the body. But I thought that this was so well laid out. The character was a typical cozy trope where the murder victim was somebody that nobody liked. So that was also very typical. But I honestly had no idea who the person was until the very end. I don't know if that says anything about me, my skills are slipping, or if it says more for the author herself, but she did a fantastic job. I did not see it coming until the reveal, of course. And I was happy that there was no immediate love interest for Jules, that she all of a sudden just threw her marriage away and threw herself into the arms of somebody in town that was good so what am i saying am i going to read the next book absolutely i'm going to give this surprisingly enough a five star i normally give them a three or four i just really liked this one i liked the character of jules I liked the way that things played out, that it wasn't just an easy romance for her, and that I couldn't tell who the murderer ended up being or the reasons why. There was a lot of subplots going on that kept me interested. 
and I flew through this one and will definitely be picking up the second book in the series. So five stars. I was wrong, but I'm happily wrong. <laughs> I thought it would be a three star, three or four star. I give this a five star and I'm very happy to have been wrong on this one. The next book I'm going to read, I'm going to slide in here because my library finally got it in. I had been waiting for this and I didn't know if it would make it for this week. It's so short. It's almost like a novella. It's 190 pages. But the typeface is pretty large, and so I think I'm going to blow through this one. It is Killer Cupid. I have read some of this series in the past. It's another cozy. Thought it would fit in perfectly for Valentine's Day. Our main character, Melanie, and her husband go away for a Valentine's Day weekend, and of course, somebody is murdered. So I thought this would be kind of fun and cute. I believe this one just came out recently. So within the last year or so, I was just able to grab it and pull it from the library. So happy to be able to read this. I will check back in with you. I'm assuming that I will just be reading through this one and give you an update once I'm finished. I have finished this Lauren Berenson, is that how you say it? Killer Cupid with our main character, Melanie Travis and her husband, Sam, that go on a getaway, romantic getaway for Valentine's Day weekend, getting away from their two kids and all of their poodles. Melanie is a standard poodle breeder and she is so attached to her her poodles that she brings along her elderly standard poodle faith and they get away for a nice weekend with Melanie's brother and sister-in-law who she is very close friends with. Of course there is a murder at this very nice exclusive resort in the Berkshires. It is the activities coordinator who Melanie saw outside talking to a mysterious man before she was murdered and so of course Melanie can't help herself but she gets herself involved in the investigation nobody knows her there except for obviously her husband and her brother and sister-in-law they don't know that she normally gets involved in murder mysteries and so when she starts poking around people just like rush it off like okay she doesn't know what she's doing the owner of the hotel asks her to go ahead and investigate, see if she can find anything out because as the owner, nobody wants to talk to her. And so in this very quick, fast read, we have Melanie helping to solve this case along with some other mysterious events that have been happening at this resort. Overall, it was a fast, quick, fun read. It was nice to go ahead and catch up with these characters that I have read um, probably 10 years ago. So I remember her as a dog breeder. There's There were a few cases, I believe, at dog shows that she went to. So it was, was fun to catch up with the characters. I don't know if I'm super eager to jump back into the series. It was just nice. It was a relaxing, quick, fast read. I would give this a three out of five stars. It was enjoyable and I like it better, I will say, when there's more information about the dogs and the dog show. So if, I, if I'm going to jump back in, I'll make sure that the next mystery that I read has something to do with that. But overall, I would give this three out of five stars. Our final book for the week was Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. This tells the story of Meg. She is an extraordinaire of all letters. So she knows fonts. She does fancy writing in planners and beautiful artistic displays in clients' homes. She used to do wedding invitations and all, all of the wedding things until one fateful day when she inscribes a hidden message into an invitation for two clients. One of them is Avery and her fiance, Reed. She hides a hidden message into the invitation, doesn't think anything of it because it's, it's very well hidden in the message until about a year later when Reed shows up at the planner store that she works at, plunks, <laughs> plunks down the invitation and asks her what this means. She doesn't know what to say. He points out what it is and she realizes, oh my gosh, he was able to figure out the message. The way it was described in here, I don't think most people would have figured it out or have seen it. 
but Reed is not like most people where Meg is concerned with letters <laughs> and fonts. He is a numbers guy and he can see patterns and that's what he spotted in this invitation. And so he is trying to find, he is trying to figure Meg out. He's got some stressful things going on in his life with his job. She just has an overall stressful life where she's trying to just keep it all together. She thinks that she has to put a face to the world that shows that she is perfect, that she doesn't have emotions that she always puts a smile on her face because of some traumatic events in her past. So she never lets anybody in and get to know her. Reed is similar in that same way where he's going through some stuff at work and doesn't know how to let other people in. So if the two of them embark on a quest for Meg to unblock some of her creativity. She is totally stumped. She has a jo potential job upcoming where she's designing planners for a very large company and she cannot seem to put her ideas or even come up with some ideas and put them on paper to submit to them. And so they embark on a very unique quest together to help unblock that and to also increase Reed's love of the city. They live in New York. He doesn't love it there. She's trying to show him the love that she has for the city and get him to enjoy it more. It's a very cute friendship that begins to form between the two of them as he works through his numbers and she works through her letters. It was a very, very unique story. I will say this was not a fast read for me. I think because she really, she truly thinks in fonts. So that's interspersed in here as well. And so that kind of has me thinking and pausing because, you know, you're thinking it's sans serif or however you say that. She's thinking in fonts and that has to, that she correlates that with her emotions, which is very interesting. I believe he does the same thing with numbers. So it had me really thinking a lot throughout. I was interested, there's some really good twists in here that I did not see coming. I just figured this was gonna be a straight laced romance where they were just going to figure things out and become, you know, romantically involved. But there are a lot of other things that happened. I was really intrigued, really enjoyed this one. I'm gonna give it a four star only because I felt like, like I said, there were some moments where it was really kind of difficult for me. It kind of felt like, okay, let's move it on. I, and I think it's because of some of the subject matter in here. And just like I said, how she thinks in a certain way. Their conversations are very stilted, the way she interacts with other people. It's very unemotional in the beginning and wasn't as easy for me to just sit there and devour the book as quickly as I normally would. But I really enjoyed this. It very much surprised me. So if you're looking for something different with not your typical romantic partners, I would definitely recommend that you pick this one up. I'm going to give it a four star and really, really enjoyed it. So that's going to do it for my TBR for the week. I got through five books. I think that's pretty darn good. <laughs> for the Valentine's Day vlog, we had five. I think it did very well overall. I would say that my two favorites were Meet Your Baker, which I gave five stars, and The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. But overall, besides... Bleeding Heart Yard. That was definitely the lowest book that I read this week. That's okay. Onward <laughs> to the next week. Next week's theme is going to be cold. Even though it's not cold here. I'm in Michigan. It's not cold. I don't know if I'm like trying to like, you know, when we have like, we're trying to summon some rain, like doing a rain dance. I don't know if I'm trying to summon some snow. I'm not really sure, but I picked a theme and it's cold. So it's going to be things that have a cold theme. So whether the title itself, the theme of the book, the cover reminds me of something cold or winter-like, that's what I'm going to go for next week. I'm excited for those books. I have a few that came in from my library that I'm super excited about sharing. Well, I'm going to read those, obviously dive right into those and share them with all of you. The first one that I'm going to jump into, if you want to follow along, if you want to read along with me, is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I've had that for a couple of weeks. I need to jump into that. I be, I was able to renew it at my library, so I'm happy about that. But it's been sitting there tantalizing me 
<laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and read that one first. We are also reading The Drift from CJ Tudor, if you're interested. I have not been hearing great things about that one. I'm a little scared, to be honest, just based on what I'm hearing. But I want to I want to experience it for myself. So check back next week for my thoughts on all of the cold and winter themed books. Bye, everybody. Thank you.